This is the Xtool S1 conveyor feeding system. This will allow you to engrave or carve really, really long objects if you so desire. But unfortunately, it does come in two separate pieces. And let's go over that. You will need the riser base and the conveyor system. These are actually sold separately. Well, that sucks. The first thing that you're going to need is the S1 riser base. And that is actually $199 US. Well, why do you need this? Well, this gives it the depth that it needs for the conveyor system, 133 millimeters. Next, you will need the S1 automatic conveyor system at $419. Now this does do a lot. I mean, look, you can actually feed a 118 inch by 18 and a half inch piece of material through it. After the riser base is fully assembled, setup is pretty darn easy. Insert the conveyor, mount two screws, insert the USB, and two more screws on the other end. And that is basically it for mounting the conveyor feeder itself. You get two sets of rails. This is for the back. And these are basically your risers to help carve through. And you see all these nice rollers that you have also. There's also two more rails for the front. There's notches that you just go ahead and push that in and slide it into place. You can use two screws on each of them to lock it in once you have the proper width that you want. And you have to go ahead and push it through on the back side as well. Same system. And you can also expand with more rails if you so choose. There's a series of rollers. You'll notice that the bottom rollers, there's five of them and five on the top, that these bottom rollers are really tacky compared to just the rubber rollers on top. I would definitely periodically check them to make sure that they're not holding on to any debris that may ruin a finish. You have a tension wheel on the top. As you'll see, you could raise and lower the guide rollers from the top. This will help uh, kind of smush and uh, give traction to the material to help feed it in. The bottom roller is to help just actually guide your uh, material through. It's pretty easy. Yeah, so you could uh, have up to 118 inches in length and 18.5 in width. Now let's go ahead and feed some material through. I'm going to roughly adjust the height so we can get the material in nice and easily. And I'm going to start using these uh, markings that are on the base here to make sure that my uh, material is not drifting. I'm going to pay very close attention to make sure that your material is moving nicely, adjusting the tension as needed. And once you're satisfied between the tension and going back and forth that your material is going in a straight line, you're ready to go. Speaking of ready to go, let's talk about today's video sponsor, PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Are you looking for rigid, flexible PCBs? Are you looking for them to assemble them for you? Well, they can. And they also offer other services such as 3D printing, injected molding, and CNC. Heck, they even have a community section where you could buy a project and assemble it on your own. If you're looking for any of these services, please reach out to PCB Way. I'd like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring today's video of the conveyor for the S1. Now we're going to back up the material so we could do a Z height adjustment. Next, we're going to open up Xtool Creative Space. In the upper right, we want to make sure that it's set to conveyor feeder. You'll notice that there is a gray area on the top. That is the forbidden area. That's where you will not be able to engrave or cut. So just keep that in mind. Next, we're going to make sure that uh, we have our Z adjusted accordingly. We're going to do the auto measure. Make sure that it's in the area where it could probe the material. Then it's going to go to the right and then it's going to probe and that's how it's going to get its Z focus. So I'm going to wait for it to finish probing and it is all done. You'll notice the plus is also moving on the creative workspace. What I'm going to do next is highlight all my graphics here because I'm going to want to do my power settings and everything else. I'm going to do a cut and I'm going to bring the power up to 100 and cut speed to 3. This is half inch poplar and I'm going to do generate some uh, tabs. Let's go with 6 so that way it, it doesn't fall out when um, it's cutting. Now I want to do my framing just to make sure that everything is all nice and lined up and this is when you can see the conveyor in motion. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the box. That's pretty slick. And Yep, everything looks really good. So we're going to then go ahead and process the job. 
Now I did go with uh, three millimeters per second because really I don't like going any slower than that. So let's see if that will actually burn through the half inch poplar. So we're gonna hit finish complete. I'm gonna be using the fume extraction for this one. And um, as you'll see, um, we have some openness now and this will no longer be a class four laser because now it's exposed. So what does that mean? Well, that means we are gonna to need to close this lid and put on some safety goggles. Now I always wear safety goggles and this actually came with a set for the conveyor. And normally I would throw them away, but this actually has a CE certification marking. And well, maybe you don't have to. Throw it away that is. But I'm a creature of habit and I prefer um, some high quality eyewear because you only get one set of eyes. So I would suggest always doing your own research and buying a nice set of safety goggles because you only get one set of eyes and you definitely don't want to lose them just by monitoring a laser. With all that being said, now well, let's go ahead and process the job. And it's ready because it's blue. Press the blue button and we're off to the races. Well, turtle races, that is. Since we are at 100% power going through half inch poplar at only three millimeters per second, this chamber is gonna fill up with smoke rather quickly and it's going to be consistent for about 45 minutes yeah that's how long this is going to take you can start to see towards the right that the smoke is starting to escape and the extraction unit is at max power you can actually see it drawing it in the lower left so you definitely want to make sure that you are in a well ventilated area windows open uh, because you definitely do not want to be breathing in any of these toxic fumes all right, now it's time to just chuck this on a time lapse because this is gonna take about 45 minutes to cut. Yeah, and you can definitely see where the smoke is and how it's uh, extracting. And we're doing large jobs like this. I would suggest venting out a window if you can because it's really going to um, start clogging your filters fast with all this smoke, especially if you're gonna be cutting this type of material. Now that's done, I would suggest uh, reducing the clamping force and just backing it out nice and slowly and now we are ready to take a look at it. Now I was kind of hoping that uh, it would cut through and uh, we didn't have such luck on this one. When I was monitoring it I did see the beam kind of go through a little bit but definitely I knew that uh, we weren't getting full penetration on this one. So but you will see that all the lettering came out nice and crisp. Uh, you know there's charring to be expected because these were supposed to fall out. Um, and you can see where we have those taps. I think they were kind of excessive for what I chose at six. Probably could have done four because um, this is such thick material. You definitely don't need as many taps. I tried to run it twice and that's what happened. So you definitely want to do it on the first pass. Don't try to do two cuts because it just doesn't line up. Now where are my thoughts? I like that it has its own little carving area and those risers definitely did its job. And you definitely want to make sure that uh, your crumb plate is in place. Otherwise, you're going to scorch your worktop. The conveyor system ran nice and smoothly. You definitely want to make sure you have a large workable area. And everything just, it gripped and it worked. Now, a couple of negatives here. Um, these rollers, <laughs> they're really sticky, like I mentioned. And if you're doing wood or something, they easily start attracting all types of debris. And to the right, you can see that that roller just didn't really pick up anything because it wasn't used. So I don't know what the lifespan of these sticky rollers are. And you're really limited to only a half inch of material. I think that's a pretty big limitation. I think they could have just dropped this further. It is literally on the top rail. There's lots of space underneath. Look at that. You got another, you could easily add another half inch and you're really restricted on the back. That's where your half inch limit really is. Now this conveyor feeder is definitely not for everyone. You're talking about $618 between the riser base and the conveyor system. However, it definitely does serve a purpose. If you're looking to engrave or cut really long items or even really big batch jobs, this is definitely the tool for you. And I would definitely refrain from doing two passes after the job is done because it just will not line up. 
Hopefully I've given you enough information that way you could have an informed decision if this is a product for your workflow. For everyone that stayed till the end, I have a little surprise. I will be giving away a riser base. Yes, a riser base. The rules are simple. You have to be 18 years or older, live in the lower 48 of the US because I am paying for shipping. All you have to do is comment below. What would you use the conveyor system for? The winner will be picked on February 17th and the winner will be selected by a random comment picking tool. The way the winner will be notified is by me, Tripod, commenting on your post. The winner will have 24 hours to reply. If the winner does not reply within 24 hours, I will simply redraw and do it all over again. Rinse and repeat. And for everyone else, there's always some type of promotion going on. So please look at the description below and um, use the coupon code as you see fit. I really appreciate you tuning into Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you the next time on Tripod's Garage.